Happy Friday. Um, as promised, we are here on live, Friday Lives. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the lymph system. So today we're not gonna just talk about plastic surgery, we're gonna talk about all things lymph um, and what we do at Amare and, and what we're doing here. So we're gonna have two videos today. We're gonna have this video all about lymph and then we're gonna have another video um, with one of our products that we really, really love from Elastic Aesthetics. It's a pair of leggings, but they are lymph-friendly leggings. So as we're gonna talk about, you don't have to have a lymph problem to care about your lymph system. Uh, it's actually better that you care about it before the problem starts. So let's get into it. Um, what is the lymph system? It's your body's waste system. Best way to describe it, when you pop a pimple, you've got the white pus that comes out, then you've got the clear fluid that comes out after it. That clear fluid is lymph fluid. Now I know we have a million videos on this, but this is gonna be a little bit different. So that clear fluid is lymph fluid. That runs all throughout your body. It runs underneath your skin, all the way down deep, up against your bones, into your bones, through your organs, everything. That stuff is responsible for proteins, white blood cells, fats, and water, transporting it into your tissues. Where does lymph fluid come from? Well, super, super, super simplified version. You drink a bottle of water, it goes into your body. It goes into your digestive system. It gets digested and put into your tissue and then it becomes lymph fluid when it's mixed with the pro proteins, white blood cells, blood cells and fat, and then the water. So that's how lymph fluid becomes lymph fluid. Now, where does it end? So it goes in that way, right? It's in your tissue. Then it filters through the lymph vessels, goes towards your lymph nodes, which are in your neck, your armpits, and your hips. And then where does it go? It gets drained into your subclavian vein right in here and goes into your blood and becomes your blood's plasma, like white blood cells and stuff. Um, so it goes into your blood. Your blood then filters through your heart, your liver, and your kidneys. Your kidneys then filter it out and take the bad stuff from the lymph fluid that was filtered through the heart, the liver, and the kidneys, and the blood, take that out and put it into your urine, and it goes out through your body. That's how lymph fluid works. That's where it goes. So when you talk about manual lymph drainage, what does that do? Like, you see all these different conflicting things, right? So they say manual lymph drainage is like for post-surgery where they cut you open and they squeeze it out. Well, think about it. If that doesn't happen on a regular day, why is that happening with surgery? That's not how that works. That's not real lymph drainage. True manual lymph drainage is where we open up your body's tissues, we open up your body's vessels, and then you pee out the fluid the way it's supposed to happen. That's real lymph drainage. So that's what we do. That's what it is. Why is it important, right? Because we talk about a lot about what it is. Why is it important? Now, you'll read like a million articles online talking about white blood cells, autoimmune diseases, um, all different kinds of things that they use lymph fluid to boost or lymph drainage to clean and boost, but why is it important in a regular person? So we have a lymph system and our lymph system is literally our body's immune system. It is responsible for our white blood cells. It's responsible for detoxing your tissues. It's responsible for detoxing your body. So a normal, normal healthy person getting lymph drainage, right? That's what we're gonna talk about. So like we talk about all these different things with lymph drainage, but like what about a normal person that doesn't need any of that, that just wants to detox? This is great for that. This is literally a deep tissue, organ, liver, body detox cleanse. So when you do your lymph drainage with us, um, depending on you know what you're going for, you can either get a regular lymph drainage session and just get lymph drainage, or you can do the detox package, which is where we give you a recipe for a green juice, you're drinking a gallon of water a day, you're coming in four days in a row, and we're continually draining you out and draining your lymph nodes and draining your tissues and draining your body. So for a normal, super healthy person that drinks a gallon of water a day and is super active, you may not have a lot come out. You may just be peeing a lot, which is great, but there may not be a lot of like, you know, craziness. Um, it may just be like a normal, it may feel like a normal massage. Now, why is it called a massage? Manual lymph drainage is not an actual massage. We have videos on this as well. It's a pumping motion done to the skin. There's no rubbing, there's no scraping, there's no lotion, oil, no, none of that crazy stuff. Um, it is literally just a little bit of a pump on your skin and that's it. So when we're talking about a healthy person, it's not really gonna feel like much. You're not really gonna feel anything, nor are you really gonna feel any of like the crazy side effects because you're not really gonna have any crazy side effects, which is a good thing. So things that we can do to kind of maintain the lymph system, right? So your body's lymph system doesn't have its own pump. It's not like the heart, it doesn't pump on its own. Your body depends on movement, full body, abstract muscle movement, not just walking you know, straight up and down on a treadmill, but like walking on trails, walking outside, things that cause your body to do different types of movement, not linear and stagnant movement. So yoga, aerobics, dance, Zumba, things that are lots of like full body movements is what pumps your lymph fluid. 
It only moves through musculoskeletal movement. So what does that mean? When we are literally pumping the skeleton to pump the muscles. The, picture the lymph vessel like this tiny in a bed of muscle. As the muscle contracts, it pumps that lymph vessel, which then pumps the fluid through the system. That's how that works. So movement is super, super, super important. Now it's made up of water. Our bodies are made up of water. We know this. So drinking water, the lymph fluid cannot move if it's stagnant and dehydrated. It needs water to push it through the system. So lots of water is the other thing. So movement, water, sleep. Guys, this is like the biggest thing. When you don't sleep right, your eyes get puffy, your face gets puffy, puffy, you feel bloated, you feel stagnant. Why? Because your body needs time to rest. Now, why is it just sleep specifically that helps the lymph system? Not because you're resting your tissues and your organs. That's one thing. But when you are sleeping, you're doing a lot of deep belly breathing. Same thing in yoga. You're doing deep belly breathing. But when you're sleeping, you're breathing through your nose and your belly is expanding and contracting. Your biggest lymph pump, cisterna chile, is underneath your belly button in your body. And when you're sleeping, you're inhaling and exhaling, inhaling and exhaling naturally, and you're on your back and you're laying down flat and gravity's helping you, you're pumping that big central pump in the body cisterna chile to pump the lymph fluid everywhere so beauty rest is literally a thing guys if you want your skin to be clearer if you want it to be more supple more soft you know get all that stuff the skin is like the last level of the lymph system when you're breaking out when you're having like little blisters little like hives um eczema acne psoriasis all of those are lymph issues that is the body trying to purge all the toxins and pushing it out through the skin the skin is the biggest organ in your body so when you're sleeping your beauty rest is literally helping pump the lymph system by you doing that deep belly breathing when you're sleeping so that's the other thing is breathing i am going to do a bunch of videos on lymph care at home which i'm starting today so those will be coming to show you exactly how to do the deep belly breathing and stuff like that but Deep belly breathing, movement, yoga, water, sleep, all of those things that we normally should be doing for us anyway, target the lymph system directly. Now, when we're talking about lymph specific things, trampoline is a lymph specific thing that helps jog the lymph system. Again, tons of articles, tons of information on it out there. Why does it help? Because it is again, full body, complete movement, swimming. Why does that help? The static pressure of the waves and the water pumping against your skin pumps the lymph system. Also, you're making big round movements. You're kicking constantly. You're moving your hips. You're moving your core. Even if you're just floating, that static pressure on the body pumping to your skin is causing lymph drainage. So swimming is also a good thing. Um, getting in that, that pressure. It has to be like a pool. It can't just be like a bathtub. You have to actually like move around like full movements. So swimming is another thing that really, really helps. Um, Jogging is also good, but again, you don't really want to jog. You don't want things that are like high impact. Think fluid. So if the lymph system is fluid, what moves fluid? If you have fluid in a jar, right? We want it to be like soft and flowing and easy. So you're going to rock the jar back and forth. You're going to, even on a trampoline, that like up and down rebounding motion, those pumping motions, something like running, like really running drains your adrenals and taxes your lymph system. Because now you have all this die off going off in your body. You've got a lot of oxygen because you're breathing, but you have to repair all this muscle, repair all this tissue. When you get swole, guys, that's lymph fluid surging into your muscles, surging into your body to repair the area and make your muscles stronger. Proteins, white blood cells, fats, and water capsulating in that muscle, helping it to heal, to grow bigger and stronger. So movements that are heavy like that and that aggravate are not good for the lymph system because it triggers the lymph system to create more swelling. We want it to pump and drain. Now, if you're looking into triggering the lymph system to create collagen, to bring more of that, that's a totally different story than draining the lymph system, getting rid of the excess swelling and getting rid of the toxins, which is what we are talking about, is making sure we get rid of all of that. So a nice hike, a nice slow walk where you're taking lots of deep breaths, where you're moving your whole body, things like that are super, super, super good for the lymph system. Now let's talk about clothes. So we know that the lymph system is like skin, right? It's skin level. So when we wear super tight clothes, when you wear a hairband around your wrist that's too tight and you get that ring, that's that's lymph fluid swelling up in there. That's trapping the movement of lymph fluid because it's building up above and it's building up below the hairband because the hairband is impeding 
that flow in the joint where the lymph system is. So things like that. Now think about it in terms of clothes, really tight bras. Why do we have side boob? Why do we have extra back fat? Those bra rolls, where do those come from? Bras that are too tight. You have one of the major highways of lymph across your back, it's upper and lower, upper back and lower back, right across your pelvis and right across your bra strap area. Bras that are too tight. Bras that are tight in general. If a bra is tight and you feel it like rubbing against your ribs and it's not very like loose but holding you, um, it's going to impede lymph fluid and you're going to get that like top hang of the bra where it like hangs over on the top and then you're going to get that overhang on the bottom, those bra rolls. That's a bra problem from impeding lymph fluid. Again, your biggest lymph drains are in your armpits. So if you have a tight band around that blocking the entrance of that, it's going to pool above and below. So things like that that will cause it. Um, heat will cause a little bit of swelling naturally. But if you have a swelling problem where you swell a lot or you retain a lot of water, it's not really retaining water. So what's happening is your body is signaling more and more lymph fluid. And then the heat is obviously going to expand the fluid. But taking a diuretic, taking a water pill is not gonna help. We're trying to get that stuff out of us. We want fluid to help flush it out. Taking a diuretic, having coffee, having alcohol, those things are going to make the water bypass your system and go right out into the toilet. Your tissue winds up dehydrated and now you have thick, hard swelling versus red, hot swelling or like puffy, watery swelling where when you poke at it, it like it, it's puffy. That's totally, totally different. So there are lots of things to talk about with this, which is why we have the MLD consults. We have the virtual online stuff. It's all subjective per your person, but we're just talking about in normal, healthy people, how these things occur. Puffy eyes um puffy ankles uh retaining water things like that where you feel like under your face is retaining water if you clench your jaw at night that will cause your puffy eyes if you are clenching at night at all that'll cause all the muscles to lock up and again those tiny vessels are in that muscle if it's locking up it's crushing that that is not moving that's not going to be able to pump because of those tight muscles so yes, massage, regular massage is good for the lymph system because it stops the problem of not being able to move the fluid. But when you're talking about moving fluid and wanting to get the puffiness off of you, you need actual lymphatic massage, like true Vodder style manual lymph drainage. That's going to open your lymph drains for your body to suck the fluid back and pee it out. That's how that works. So things that we can do at home. Um, a lot of common misconceptions that people hear, hot and cold, right? Having like the hot cold thing to flush your system, that's for the vascular system, not the lymph system. That doesn't change those vessels. All that does is the anchoring filaments that hold those vessels in place, heat will make them lax and they'll, the vessels will kind of float and not take in as much fluid. Um, and cold will make them, you know, constrict. If that muscle constricts, it's not gonna be good for the lymph system. It's not gonna help open it up. So. Humans are very fickle. We want to be in that like right around the right temperature warm area. That's kind of where you want to be with lymph. There is no real temperature thing where it's like, oh, hot water does this, cold water does that. It's not really how that works um, with the lymph system. With the vascular system, it definitely does. It opens vasodilation, vasoconstriction, flushes blood through. But with the lymph system, it's not quite the same. So things that are pro-lymph system, like we've talked about, are movement, water, sleep, deep breathing, things that are going to be fluid movements, getting the body moving, pumping motions. So any kind of pumping motions, those really, really help. If you have swelling in a specific area, like your wrist, let's say you hurt your wrist and it's swollen, and you know, you wrap it, you ice it, you do all those things and it's still really swollen. The worst thing you can do for that wrist, that swollen wrist, is keep it stagnant. Because then all the fluid is not getting a chance to pump and you're not activating the lymph system at all because you're not pumping it. So the best thing to do would be start with some wrist circles, start with some back and forth, as many as you can, as gentle as you can, getting that fluid to move out of that area. And then for things like that, get manual lymph drainage done on it so that it can drain easier. So someone is manually helping the system absorb more fluid to be flushed out through your urine. That's how that works. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this was a good little tidbit on like things to do at home. And again, guys, healthy people definitely do need to keep up with that. Things that trigger in the body that like, oh, I may have a lymph problem is excessive swelling. That is number one is excessive swelling. Um, if 
you are really like you feel dehydrated your body feels like it's like hard if your skin is tough if your skin is always dry things like that it means that the lymph system underneath is not functioning properly the same way you'll notice like if you're breaking out um people with eczema psoriasis when they have a flare up they know it's because all of the toxins in their lymph system are coming up to the surface to try and get out of the body and it's trying to break through the skin that's what that is um so any of those symptoms anything like that even in a you know a healthy person you're not really gonna feel anything in your lymph system you're not supposed to just make sure you're walking make sure you're drinking lots of water make sure you're getting rest things like that and that's really as much as you can do but if you think maybe you know you've gained a lot of weight recently out of nowhere and it's just in one area of your body maybe you're wearing underwear that are too tight or a bra that's too tight maybe you're in scrubs all day and the band from the scrubs are like pinching at your waist causing you to gain fluid in your abdomen you can destroy the lymph system when those vessels are gone they don't come back yes there are lymph system surgeries that are still you know being experimented and stuff like that that people have tried that they've kind of worked but general rule of thumb 600 to 750 lymph vessels when those are destroyed they're gone lymph nodes also when they're gone you can't get them back they don't repair it's not like that so what we do with lymph drainage is we kind of push the fluid into the healthy vessels the healthy nodes saying hey there is nothing here to catch all this fluid go this way where the healthy stuff is and then it helps the body drain that's the other point of lymph drainage is to get it to redirect and get it to stop blowing up in the same area so if you notice that you're you know have a little extra or you've gained because you're on medication an extreme amount of weight out of nowhere um, a lot of side effects of medication are edema. Edema is a fancy word just for swelling. That's all that is. So just, you know, keep a check on it. Be aware. I hope this video helped. I hope it was a little bit educational and I will see you guys soon. Look out for that other video on the leggings that you guys can get that will help with lymph drainage in the legs. Bye.